Oh, okay. Hey, welcome, uh, Dara Campbell and uh, Kaz Redfinsky uh, from uh, our great northern neighbor, Canada, uh, the uh, uh, filmmaker and star of uh, Anne at 13,000 Feet, um, which is playing at the Tallahassee Film Festival this uh, Sunday. Um, thanks for joining me and thanks for being at the festival, even in this uh, manner of uh, zoomy uh, uh, distance. Um, thought I would, uh, you know, uh, ask you a few questions about the film. Um, uh, first off, um, I was kind of interested in how you guys met and came to uh, collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice story. We met at uh, the Cinematheque um, in Toronto at TIFF. Uh, I was there with Matt Porterfield and Hannah Gross, and we were seeing a Michael Snow screening. I don't remember. Do you remember which one? Okay. You know what? I don't remember either. It was the one, I think it was the one with all of his paint cans. <laughs> I remember there was a lot of... <laughs> Shelf. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like one of the later ones. Anyways, we met at the cinema. How appropriate. And then Kaz runs a screening series um, in Toronto, at, mm -hmm. uh, and I would attend that pretty frequently. Um, so we kind of got to know each other through, yeah, always seeing each other at the cinema. Is Toronto, it strikes me as a, it's a kind of a small town for filmmakers, like probably everybody there knows everybody else and these sort of uh, collaborations uh, happen pretty easily. I mean, like people are kind of f bumping into each other at cafes and that, and that sort of is a natural uh, habitat for mm -hmm. this kind of uh, cre creative activity. You know what? Yeah, in a way, maybe that is true um, that especially thinking back to like 2012, 2011, mm -hmm. there weren't many English language Canadian films being made at a low budget level that were sort of playing at festivals. So I, I remember when The Dirties played at Locarno, I, I mm -hmm. quickly became aware of Matt Johnson and um, similarly with a few other directors, Andrew Sipdino or um, Ashley McKenzie with Werewolf, that as soon as, you know, oh, it, God. Was, it felt like slowly like a wave of, of of filmmakers were sort of appearing and um or sophia sophia booked the notes um that yeah so in that sense i think that there's some truth to that because at the same time it, it you know for the longest time you know toronto was like hollywood north and, <laughs> That's and right. there were a lot of film productions there but I, I would say our community um our peer group doesn't have much to do with that. And it did seem like at, you know, at the Cinematheque or a few of the sort of uh, rep houses in Toronto that we, yeah, we would run into each other. And, um, and I think we were sort of inspired by each other. So if somebody made a film, we would sort of support it. And I think people started working together in that way. Cause it felt, it felt kind of new and it was nice to have uh, peers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, how did how did you and Dara begin talking about about this film? I mean, what what was kind of the seed of it, or the uh, uh, I don't know uh, germinating force behind it? Yeah, well, I I wanted to work with Dara, um, so I'd seen the films that she acted in, so that I definitely was keeping tabs on you know exciting films out of the U.S. So I uh, you know was a fan of Matt Porterfield's work or. Nathan Silver. So I'd seen all these sort of indie productions. So I think mm -hmm. that's also why it was sort of exciting when Dara moved back to Canada from New York. It was, it was nice to have, you know, she felt like she was contributing to the scene by sort of bringing um, her background um, <laughs> that it was sort of energized. So I was definitely inspired to try to want to collaborate uh, with her. And it's, you know, it was a lot of long conversations and I guess a lot of time passed. So with my second feature, How Heavy This Hammer, Dara has a cameo in that film. And it's almost a screen test for you know, 13,000 feet that she plays a daycare teacher in this mm -hmm. film. And we shot that back in 2014. So ideas and conversations about Anna, about Anne were germinating all the way, all the way back then. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, Dara, how did Anne kind of materialize in your head? And, and uh, where do you think she came from as it relates to your, uh, you know, your practice or your, uh, uh, 
you know, uh, evol evolution as a writer hmm. and performer. Yeah, um, it's it's funny because so much time has passed and um, weirdly someone tagged me the other day in like an older interview that we did like when the film premiered at TIFF in, in 2019 and I read part of it and, and it was saying like how one of the ideas behind um, the character of Anne was her like always suspecting that she was bad or that she was evil like like having um, and that that is part of like what she's trying to overcome is she's trying to um, she's she's trying to like banish that idea or escape that idea and that was just funny because I did not remember that that was part of it at all um, and I think like really who she was and what her this kind of driving force behind her wasn't actually really discovered for a while like it was really Kaz had written the script and had prepared all these sort of scenarios and then it was sort of being put in those scenarios and kind of like discovering who the character was in reaction to that and it sort of became like um yeah her kind of like desperate desire to be to be close to people but like not really knowing how to do that and so kind of inadvertently alienating people <laughs> <laughs> oh we all know people like that don't we <laughs> sure. <laughs> sometimes when we look in the mirror even um <laughs> the um you know the the kind of dynamic range of some of those scenes you know uh the arc of emotions um is pretty pretty powerful um well what was it like to play that i mean how does it feel inside when you're doing that is it you know um, I don't know, I guess some people go with like kind of a method acting thing. Other people uh, have other ways of getting where they need to go. Uh, you know, as a performer uh, on camera, what, what, what guides you or, or, or what guided you in this, in this role? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely not a method actor and not um, like not a very psychological actor, mm -hmm. I think. And, and I think for me, it's more about like focus and momentum and like, like trying your very best to be present. And I think like the times when I'm able to be present and react to what's around me, I actually, that's really an escape and is really pleasurable and it actually feels more like a release. The mm -hmm. only times I get miserable are when I get like really in my own head and and can't stop thinking about my own life or, you know, being disappointed in myself or not being able to do something I wanted to be able to do. Um, and that's when you, uh, when you get stuck in a kind of self-conscious state and that's not very nice, but I guess it's about developing strategies to escape <laughs> that voice in your head a bit. So kind of shutting everything off so you can free yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's good, like like working with Kaz or something, because I think he's good at um, like manifesting different things in the scene to get your attention, you know, like, mm -hmm. like maybe getting one of the kids to do something that I didn't expect them to do that can kind of snap you out of a self-conscious state. <laughs> Um, what was it like, uh, speaking of the kids, what was that like uh, interacting with those kids who were, I mean, were they acting, acting, or were they just being themselves for the most part? Um, let, let Kaz, yeah. the cat wrangler speak. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The cat herder. <laughs> a bit of both. Um, that we definitely, you know, wanted to be inspired by the children or to sort of take some of our cues from mm -hmm. them. So like an obvious example of that would be Oliver, uh, the, the shark boy in the film. So once we met Oliver and he, he wouldn't stop talking about sharks, we, we, <laughs> we would know that we could rely on that in every scene to have a uh, passionate um, shark discourse. Um, but uh, um, 
at the same time too, we shot with these kids for a long period of time and we always tried to keep it brief, you know, two hours at most. Mm -hmm. But I think as we shot with them more and more, there was, uh, they sort of test boundaries or it, it became, it became less pure and was sort of, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a, you had to get a bit creative sometimes to get moments that we were looking for. Right. Um, and that was with a troupe of actors, like a little, you know, we had like six or seven actors that were working more at, as child actors that we would meet with them every Saturday and work with them for two hours or so. We also did shoot with quite a lot of children who were just at the daycare, um, mm -hmm. that they're a volunteer at the daycare. And, um, we were able to just sort of go into a classroom and film like a documentary. The opening of the film, when, when there has the butterfly on her finger, that was, you know, just, just a random group of children that were at the daycare. So it's a mixture. But yeah, some of those scenes were, were very constructed towards the end, especially with the, um, the scene about the mercury that we would, you know, moment to moment, there's maybe three week gaps of when we were actually shooting it and kind of looking for these beats to sort of mm -hmm. paste it all together uh, for that sequence. That's um, a scene that I found really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> um, something else I noticed, which probably has been commented on, is just the there's a feels like there's a lot of choreography in there in terms of like the camera's relationship with Dara and Dara's placement within a scene, um, the uh, clip, the tighter framing at times, um, which uh, seems to really maximize the dramatic energy. Um, I was interested in hear um, you all uh, talk about that a bit. Just yeah, I mean, it's, a, and... it's something I've, you know, always been drawn to. And it's in a, most of my films, this idea of, of the close-up. And, you know, initially, it's something that really excited me um, as a young filmmaker that just sort of gave this vitality uh, to it. But as I started working with it more and more, especially uh, feature-length version of it, yeah, there's a certain sort of discomfort that I, I like about it or mm -hmm. confusion or uh, this feeling of being really close to something mysterious is a tension or, that I really like. Um, but also just in, in terms of how we're entering the film, you know, um, and, and not getting too comfortable and, and not feeling like we totally understand, but somehow are implicated. It's, it's something I rely on. But in terms of the choreography, uh, more specifically, um, yeah, Nikolai, the cinematographer, and Dara have a great uh, relationship, like a lot of trust mm -hmm. uh, in that. Um, you know, that dynamic between them. So again, we were fortunate to be able to shoot this film over quite a long period of time. So I think there's a lot of aspects to Nikolai and Dara's relationship that is just sort of, um, you know, these sort of intangibles of, of them working together and a sort of trust, but maybe Dara, you can articulate it better than me. No, I think, I mean, Nikolai as a person, he's like this very open, non-judgmental person and, and I guess that translates a bit in that, um, yeah, he's not someone who who you kind of like feel some kind of like watching judgmental presence. Like he, um, he's someone that I think kind of lets you be yourself, that you don't feel like you're gonna make mistakes around or something that, um, that he weirdly yeah is just this like very unobtrusive presence that and he the way he moves with the camera also is like so in response to what's happening around him um yeah that in a weird way someone that was further away actually potentially could be um could feel more intrusive potentially mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're always adapting to the performance. Uh, so it's not like there is hitting marks or anything that we're always adjusting and working around the performance. And Nikolai is incredibly adept at that. Uh, we have a very small footprint on it. And, you know, he's doing most of the, you know, director of photography, uh, the whole photography department is him. And a lot of it's also just us learning the location and sort of setting up practical lights so that we can sort of allow for that choreography and just go mm -hmm. uh, where the performance leads us. Um, so yeah, we, we, we choose a location that we can return to a lot too and sort of always be shooting. So on one level we're rehearsing the performance, we're also learning how to photograph it based on the performance too. Yeah. And then as you said, this was something that was shot over 
I don't know how, how much time did you approximately two years. Oh, wow. Okay. Out very sporadically and with <laughs> you know, a few heavier months here and there. But yeah, uh, so that gives you a whole era first jumped out of the plane. And so we, we wrapped, I think it was about two years. Yeah. So that, that gives you a whole different approach. Uh, than the usual, let's shoot it in 16 days. Yeah, and um, I thought, you know, when we began this production, I didn't necessarily think it would be two years. I thought, in fact, that this would be um, a faster shoot than normal for me because I'd never worked with an actor like Dara before. Most of the, the performers of my other films are not actors. Mm -hmm. But that being said, this sort of amount of shooting time is kind of normal for me. My, my first two features were around a year, two years uh -huh. ago. So it's something I kind of rely on, <laughs> being able to shoot something, think about it, go back and shoot it. Something that initially was like really practical, a pragmatic thing, like we have like jobs in limited location, but it's something I've really fallen in love with is that having a lot of time to adjust and go back and shoot different things. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, Let me ask both of you, were there um, any particular uh, other films that kind of guided your approach to this or gave you any kind of... I don't know, intellectual nourishment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and there's definitely like certain films where people will mention them and be like, yes, of course, of course. Um, <laughs> so like, yeah, like Forest for the Trees by Marinata is one that's come up a lot. And that mm. one's always a happy inspiration. Um, but yeah, I don't know if Dara and I specifically spoke about that film. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of films in the back of my head, um, certainly in different different ways. I mean, everybody always says that Cassavetes, and it's like, of course, I mean, like Cassavetes, I feel is just like in the air, like he influences most. Yeah, sure. Of yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, even more specifically, though, like my mother is in the film. I like that. And that sort of happened. It's the first time I've worked with like my mom in the leading role, but yeah, definitely my mom acting in the film, maybe somewhere I'm, I'm thinking of Cassavetes and how, how much I love those scenes with uh, his parents in them or, so yeah, in those ways, in, sure, the Darden brothers, I think are obviously an influence. Oh, yeah, yeah, lots, yeah. Of, lots, lots of influences like that. The Canadian influence would be Alan King, uh, Warrendale, I think for sure, mm -hmm. um, was, was a really important film. More, I'm trying to think more recent or almost more, um, I guess like the skydiving sequence, I'm sure Leos Carax and uh, Mova Sang was, was a bit of inspiration <laughs> with uh, Juliet Pinoes jumping out of the plane. Um, so yeah, I mean, like we said earlier, Darren and I had sort of met at a movie theater, so. Um, There's a whole like art house schematic underlying, mm. underlying the- uh, Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jenner, Jenner Rollins is, is a good person to look to because I think um, a lot of the time when you think naturalism as an actor, I think you think, or for some reason I thought when I s started, like that it's all about like quite small gestures. Mm -hmm. It's, I think with Anne, I did, I was playing, before I'd been playing characters that were kind of more shy than even I am, and I'm fairly shy. So, yeah, to play someone with like larger reactions and be like, oh yeah, we do react in very large ways. We show a lot in our faces in everyday life. And like, you think that going like this isn't natural, but I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess like, like what she brings into her her acting vocabulary um um sort of like like that when she's sad she'll kind of almost make fun of what being sad looks like mm. <laughs> by doing this like exaggerated sad face um and yeah so it's kind of nice to know that that yeah natural behavior extends in this kind of meta way where you're kind of doing things in your day-to-day -day life that are actually quite theatrical or quite absurd or kind of clownish. Mm -hmm. So what we think of as natural is already a little theatrical. I mean, there's no way to escape like, I mean, and that is so true of like, like bad acting as well too. Like there's sometimes like, like certain ways that people act on in TV or something that then people kind of imitate. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know it's real. Um, do you have any particular ritual or, or um, 
you know, if you're, if you're in a role, if you're doing a shoot, I mean, do you, do you try to shut things out at all or, or do you, do you change your regular behavior in any way in your own life? Um, I'm not talking about like eating a, pasta or something and because you've got yeah. a Carl <laughs> Carl Yeah. Um, I think the thing is too, like, I don't, like I would like to work more, but like, like I don't actually work that much. <laughs> like I kind <laughs> of have to, so I sort of like forget how to act or I, or I think that I can act and then I have to do it. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's terrifying. Um, so I think it has been kind of like a mad grab in every shoot but I've tried out a couple of things now that can be fun like like I was in a movie that shot in Nova Scotia and I would take like walks along the like actually like quite terrifying uh like shore of the ocean that like was like so loud and, and violent that it sort of felt like a weird like hell pit. Um, <laughs> but I would like <laughs> walk beside that in the morning and I was kind of hoping that like that weird evil energy would somehow be <laughs> in the character. <laughs> um, yeah, or like that I could think about, like have that image of the ocean being scary and loud in my head and that I could think of that and that would kind of snap me back into the world of the character or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember what that <laughs> image was for Anne. Mm -hmm. What um, are you, would you say you're mostly committed to working with, you know, uh, directors you know in Canada or, um, I mean, you haven't you don't act that often, but would you want to act more often if uh, there was more around or is it more of just not wanting to have to deal with uh, that, you know, just going for projects that really speak to you? I think it's, I think like I've been like extremely lucky. Like I don't think most actors get, get to be, um, in as many films that they like <laughs> as, <laughs> right <laughs> as i am and um and it's also like like i realized too especially like when the pandemic came um that i was in quite a different position than a lot of other actors i knew because it wasn't like the total infrastructure of my life fell apart because i i have mm -hmm. collaborators that i continue to work with and i feel like that's so much better than just being entirely on your own. You know, you have, you're working more out of a community where there's most actors have to work from this like very like individual in their management place. I think like I am open to doing other things, but like the things I do exist in this very particular world of like festivals and cinema texts that like mm -hmm. I don't actually have any market value <laughs> like and I think like like someone that did like a season of Murdoch mysteries in Canada has like more market value than I do somehow so like when it comes to like bigger things with like m like uh investor meetings like I don't I don't think um I can get a movie made <laughs> so, so I don't think uh, I don't think I'm in consideration. Um, how does how does that work for you, Kaz? As far as uh, your own efforts, there are you pretty committed to the model that you've got? Or I think so. Going, yeah, yeah. Um, I think for at least the next next couple or so. Um, mm. uh, yeah, I, I I really process is important and uh, working with the same few people is really important. And I'll suggest, I guess I like to learn sort of through the, through the filmmaking process or really let it sort of evolve. Uh, so whenever I've dabbled in sort of more commercial projects, it's always kind of 
soul crushing. <laughs> so yeah, I really, um, I think for at least, you know, the follow up to Anne, um, which I'm writing for, for Dara again. Um, yeah, certainly, you know, I really like making films in Toronto, uh, about places I know people I know. So I think that's always for at least the short term is going to be the, where I take a lot of inspiration from. Yeah, I think you should do like a travel movie, Kaz. Like you should apply for. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I have to get one of those like um, tickets where you fly around the world um, <laughs> for a year. And maybe maybe that that could. And a model pilot. Yeah, that's a yeah. I gotta be a pilot. That's the that's the trick. Yeah. I hope that like, uh, I hope that and at thirteen thousand feet like gets sold to Air Canada flights or something, just so I can make the joke of like and at thirteen thousand feet at in, at thirteen thousand feet. Yeah, well, they're higher than or they're at two times thirteen thousand feet or twenty six thousand feet. Yeah, and at twenty six thousand. Yeah, I guess those those like passenger planes get really high. Hey, how was the uh, skydiving? Had you done that before? No, it was very uh, horrifying. You're not supposed <laughs> to jump out of a plane. It's not what humans were made for. It was the first thing we shot, too. <laughs> first scene. And I think you were wrapping MS Slavic 7 that Yeah, day. Like, like in the morning, we wrapped MS Slavic 7, and then I went to the hairdresser and dyed my hair blonde. And then we went to the skydiving place, and I jumped out of the plane. Kind of a great symbolic way to begin a movie. I think 2018, 2019 was like such a, was a good run. Awesome. Making movies and uh, sharing movies with people. And then 2020 came. Well, hopefully we'll be out of it one day. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we'll stick around for a second. I'm going to... Um, in the recording part of this, but um, thanks for uh, sharing your time today. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully a lot of people will be uh, watching the film in person and online this weekend at our festival. Oh, nice. Yeah. Doing in yeah. person and online, great. Yeah, just to give folks uh, the option. Uh, you know, we're, we're in the uh, COVID uh, heavy zone of Florida. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it's uh it's keeping safe it's a little scary out there anyway um great well thank you hang on and i'm gonna